The Agriculture for Nutrition and Health program in the CGIR is focused on finding agricultural interventions, policies, technologies that will lead to improved health outcomes uh, from agriculture uh, uh, viewed broadly. And obviously, aflatoxins <coughs> is one of those key areas where improvements in agriculture can lead to improvements in health. And as um, Delia and I and others in the CG uh, we're discussing the aflatoxin research portfolio and how that might be strengthened and expanded. Uh, it became clear that it would be a useful foundation to pull together all the various perspectives, efforts, and expertise because this um, topic has attracted a lot of attention. A lot of people are working on it, but from very different perspectives. And so that was the motivation for this set of briefs, which I'm going to walk you through just uh, very quickly. You all know, since you're here, I'm sure you all know that these are toxins produced by naturally occurring fungi and that they've been around for millennia. So why all the, the focus now? Well, it seems that over the last decade there have been a number of events that have brought attention in the international community to aflatoxins. Among others, um, some scientific evidence suggesting greater health risks than had previously been understood. Uh, some specific incidents in terms of market disruption and barriers to market development. Um, this, uh, an acute outbreak in eastern Kenya in 2004 that drew attention to how um, very high levels can actually be acute. All of this culminating in 2011 in the creation of the Partnership for Aflatoxin Control in Africa supported by the Gates Foundation, which is coordinating policy responses throughout uh, the continent. Uh, and is, that effort is represented in one of our briefs. So the second reason why now um, is that in spite of all this attention, and all these good efforts, it's a very persistent problem. It's persistent because there's a higher incidence of aflatoxins in the tropics for many crops, and the public health exposure is greater because of higher consumption of staple foods that carry aflatoxins. As some of our briefs document, um, among smallholders or poor consumers, there's very little knowledge of the risks posed by aflatoxin contamination or of appropriate control methods. Knowledge is very incomplete. Um, even where control methods are understood, they do add costs, and markets don't consistently reward improvement uh, because of a lack of information and incentives, which is something we'll hear um, more about in this panel. As part of putting the set of briefs together, we wanted to have a comprehensive look at the reasons why we're interested in aflatoxins. And so the briefs begin with a set on health uh, and review what is known about the health hazards. And um, I refer you to those briefs for the complexities of this issue, which of course I can't do justice to here today. Um, but we all know that aflatoxin can be an acute health hazard, that it's clearly linked to liver cancer. There's some evidence associating child stunting and immune suppression with aflatoxin exposure, but it's hard to disentangle because usually there are other uh, factors that lead to those outcomes as well. And so um, that's an area of continued exploration, but the suggestions that it is linked to these very serious outcomes are part of the motivation uh, for addressing this risk. It's also a commercial risk, as I mentioned, in terms of a barrier to trade, it certainly is a necessary condition for entering trade in international markets. And as again, as some of the surveys reported in our briefs show, a high percentage of crops in many developing countries don't meet high income country standards for aflatoxins. That also makes it a barrier to um, local commercial market development, either for animal feeds <coughs> or for processed foods. Like many food safety risks, aflatoxin is a ubiquitous environmental hazard. Uh, it first occurs on the crop during the process of production, can grow and multiply if the crop's not handled properly in drying and storage, and so uh, solutions have to address the whole supply chain. 
and they uh, often combine new technologies uh, with improved market institutions. We have a set of briefs that deal with technology-focused research, some very exciting work in the other international ag research centers to develop plants that have better resistance to fungus, to develop and adapt biocontrols. Those are non-toxic strains of fungus that can replace the toxic strains when distributed on fields, such as um, these farmers are doing here in Nigeria and also research to develop better diagnostics that are cheaper and easier to use and will allow people to identify uh, when there's aflatoxin on the crop because um, fungal growth is an imperfect indicator, a leading indicator, but an imperfect one. We have a set of briefs on policies and markets and uh, looking at some of the efforts underway to address aflatoxins in terms of the global public goods of standards, uh, in terms of how risk assessment might better target and inform education and intervention if applied more rigorously. And finally, on market incentives and value chain interventions, which is the, uh, will be represented here in the rest of the panel. But obviously, um, I want to end on an optimistic note because this is a persistent problem. But um, improvements do have the potential to lead to a virtuous uh, cycle. And so improved productivity, uh, crop husbandry, post-harvest management, drought resistance strains, those um, kinds of improvements can lead to both higher yields and reduced aflatoxin susceptibility in plants. Reduced aflatoxin levels will support the development of commercial markets and improve quality, and market incentives support that adoption of aflatoxin control. The same positive synergy, of course, uh, applies to regional and global trade. And all of those things taken together then uh, can contribute to improve public health by reducing aflatoxins, their health effects, and possibly supporting improved nutrition outcomes. So now I'd like to turn it over with that brief teaser, and I hope you will go and read all of the um, uh, aflatoxin briefs. Uh, the authors have worked hard to make them both rigorous and accessible. Uh, but what we chose to focus on here today is a group of people who are in the process of unlocking this virtuous circle uh, through providing specific kinds of interventions in markets in order to uh, promote aflatoxin control and improve quality.